Hi everyone, good afternoon. Thank you for joining another one of Ironside's Take 30s with the Data Scientists. I'm Pam Askar, I'm the, the Director of Data Science here at Ironside. Uh, today, I'm really excited to be sharing with you AWS's SageMaker Studio that was just announced uh, and released six months ago at reInvent. So we'll take a little stroll through there. As a reminder, we are here, um, our, our sole mission is to help clients use data to make better decisions about their business. And we bring to the table 20 years of end-to-end -end data and analytics value. And I always like to point out that uh, these capabilities that we have here all support data science. Um, it is a team sport, and I work very closely with all of our practices and centers of excellence. So I work closely with our advisory team to build AI strategies. Um, I work with the experienced designers to make sure that we're solving the right problems and, and delivering, delivering a um, solution that really meets the end user's goals. Work closely with data ops teams to deploy and build data pipelines and get models out into production and then our, our management team to, to manage those long term and to host them. So, so it really is a team sport and I'm very grateful to work for a firm that has all of these capabilities that work so well together for the success of data science. So our agenda today, um, pretty straightforward, we're going to look at what SageMaker Studio is. Um, do a tool comparison. I'm going to look at some similar platforms out there and then I'll jump in and give you a demo of it. So SageMaker Studio um, is AWS's machine learning platform. Um, it's a web-based integrated development environment, so IDE if you're familiar with that. Really the goal here is to provide an end-to-end -end solution. So before they released this, like I said, it's limited six months, before that they had SageMaker um, and SageMaker is essentially Jupyter notebooks that can run off AWS engines and, and that was the primary mach machine learning tool. But they really wanted to provide something more end to end with um, functionality that can really accelerate the data scientist's work. And so that's what they put together here. It's still in early release. Uh, it's still only available in a couple of regions and they're still working on it, developing it um, and improving it. And so if you look at demos from six months ago, they look a little bit different than what I'm gonna show you today. And I assume six months from now, it'll look a little bit different from this. So just keep that in mind. Um, if you come back to this, this video, you know, a couple months from now, things have changed. They're constantly working on this. It's, um, it's an improvement. So let's look at some of the capabilities that SageMaker Studio offers. Um, first is SageMaker Notebooks. So like I said, outside of this, they still have SageMaker, it's still available. Um, and that is kind of the, the main component within SageMaker Studio. So it's, it's the same thing. It's like Jupyter Notebooks running off AWS. Uh, you can still go in there and kind of manually code, do your um, feature engineering, bring all your data together, do all that data munging. You can train models, you can deploy models, you can monitor those models. So you can do all of that just from a Jupyter Notebook or a SageMaker Notebook in this case. Um, but SageMaker Studio really has all of these other capabilities to take some of the burden off you having to do all that manually. So for example, the, the next one here is SageMaker Experiments. So when a data scientist is doing machine learning, they're gonna check different models, uh, different algorithms out there and compare performance. But they're also gonna look at any given algorithm and they're going to adjust and tune it and watch how every single little adjustment impacts performance and accuracy. So they're going to write that, run it, um, get the metrics on it, change it up, get the metrics on it, and go back and forth. Uh, SageMaker experiments allow you to kind of tag all those, essentially, to a single experiment. So you create an experiment, and then you tag all those variations, and it's going to call those trials. And what it does is allow you then to just open that experiment and view all of them side by side and their accuracy and performance uh, right there. This, I think, is pretty novel, at least outside of the auto ML world. Uh, it's pretty novel to have that kind of capability just for, for manually written scripts. So I think that's a pretty um, nice function. And then they have SageMaker Debugger. So this is different than software debugging. This is really for your model. So you may have accidentally left some field in there that has target leakage. Maybe it's leaning towards overfitting or there's imbalanced data. Uh, there's problems in your your model or your algorithm and sometimes you have to set it up and it runs for several hours and you come back and you're like Ugh, it, you know i messed that up i've got to go back and fix it so SageMaker debugger is going to send you real-time alerts so as it's training if it detects something a little bit off it's going to let you know that you can go in and, and give you some suggestions to debug that um, on the fly which is a really nice function especially if those models are taking a long time you don't want to waste all that time and go back and forth um, 
And then I have SageMaker Model Monitor. This is a fantastic feature and um, I'm really glad to see more and more platforms coming out giving this kind of um, functionality. Because once you deploy your models, it's not done. You can't just kind of leave it out there to the world. All models over time are going to start to drift in accuracy. Sometimes things happen, um, changes in the market, the economy, COVID-19 hits, <laughs> um, or just a, a change in your, your data collection process, right? Something could change um, that changes the data and upsets that model and all of a sudden it's not performing as well as it used to. So it's really important to have a system set up that's going to monitor all of that over time and send you some kind of alerts when it's happening. Uh, if you're familiar with AWS and you get CloudWatch uh, billing alerts, it's the same process they would come through CloudWatch. So you get those alerts that your model's um, drifting a little bit in where it used to be. So what it does is once you deploy it, it's going to just start collecting data and watch that accuracy and that accuracy is going to bounce around a little bit, but it's going to make sure it doesn't bounce around too much. So that's a great tool. Um, finally, we have SageMaker Autopilot. So this is AWS's auto ML tool that they put out there and um, it's gotten a lot of hype and excitement and people compare it to data robot. And so I'm going to do a little bit of a comparison. Um, for me, I think this is fantastic. I, I love auto ML. It does accelerate work, but I think it, it gets a lot of excitement when there's a lot of other things in this platform that are also very, very helpful and also accelerate the work that the data scientists do. So for me, the whole end to end platform is really exciting. Um, again, talk about some ways that it can be improved. There's still some kinks and some, some things that they're working through, um, but it's a very promising, promising platform. So I wanted to uh, first just talk, touch on the autopilot and what it really does. So auto machine learning tools generally work uh, similarly. Um, they're going to do some feature preparation for you. Now, this part, I think, is where it often gets misunderstood. An autopilot or, or auto ML platform can prepare your features. It can treat them. It can do things like one hot encoding or um, uh, transformations for skewed or non normal distributions or some grouping and clustering as a pre processing step. What it can't do is mine your entire database and extract those features and understand what to bring in and aggregate it to the appropriate level, right? That's what you're doing as a data scientist. But there is that mundane kind of cleanup at the end that it will do for you. Um, so it's a huge time save and it's the mundane, less interesting work that data scientists are happy to, to hand over to a robot anyway. And then it's going to run lots of different algorithms and it's going to auto-tune the parameters of those. So instead of a data scientist, adjusting parameter, looking at the outcome, adjusting it, looking at the outcome. It kind of sets it up, says go run, do your thing. It'll compare all the algorithms. It'll compare and optimize all those different um, tuning parameters for you. And then you can look at them and, and kind of compare and see how they performed. So, so it has this nice um, display at the end of what it calls trials within the experiment, all those different variations. And, and you can rank them and you can get some visualizations on them, uh, which I'll show you in a little bit. So some things to keep in mind, though, with, um, with autopilot. Data has to be in an S3 bucket. <clears throat> so if you're working from SageMaker notebooks, you can pull data in through you know, any number of sources and start working with it. But when you do an autopilot, it's assuming that you have a trained flat file, a CSV. Um, it's ready to go. It's aggregated to the right level. And it has to be sitting in S3. And so I think it's it's just kind of important when you jump into this that you understand what an S3 bucket is and, and how to create it and how to access it, et cetera. Um, like I said, the data's already got to be aggregated to the right level. Um, a lot of the, the feature extraction needs to be done. You've got to have a training table ready to go. And this is really best for classification or regression problems. So when I open it up and show you, it'll ask you which, which one it's right for. Um, or it can auto figure it out for you pretty easily. But, um, you know, this isn't appropriate for maybe time series. Um, maybe down the road they, they will add that as a function, but right now it doesn't have that um, really complicated image processing, things like that. So this is really for uh, your more basic classification or regression models, but those really do make up the vast majority of use cases out there for machine learning. So it can handle almost, almost all of your needs. One thing I wanted to point out, I was actually kind of glad to see this, um, this quote, quote from Field Caddy. 
um, the author of the Data Science Handbook. He said, by the time you have a CSV, that's your, your flat file for training, you've done 90% of the work. So most of data science comes from thinking about what the right data sets to use are, what the right outcome variable to target is, the biases in your data, and then munging and joining them together. So it's not that auto machine learning isn't valuable, because it certainly is, but I think people kind of hear it and assume that you're just handing over a lot of the data science work and, and it's gonna do most of the work for you. They think that it'll do 90% and it's actually the reverse. You've gotta do all of that work upfront uh, because that's really the human flexible thinking kind of critical thinking work. And then it can automate all of the, the manual steps that a data scientist would go through. Um, so it's really great at doing a lot of variations, optimizing those and finding the best one for you. So I think that's just important to keep in mind about where AutoML uh, fits in. So before we jump into the tool, I just wanted to do a little bit of a comparison. Um, when, when AWS released uh, SageMaker Studio, a lot of people started comparing it to Data Robot, the autopilot at least. Um, and I think there is a race on the market to come up with auto machine learning, but also these end-to-end -end platforms that can handle everything. And so I wanted to compare three of these platforms, not just for their auto ML capabilities, but the whole platform. Um, these are, are tools that are marketed to be end-to-end -end and have uh, auto ML capabilities. And um, they're really kind of, some of the, the users will overlap, but sometimes they don't. So I'll, I'll explain that in a little bit. Um, they're very different. SageMaker Studio, like I said, they, they had their SageMaker notebooks, and then wanted to build out this whole platform, and that was the goal. Data Robot, on the other hand, was strictly a auto ML tool, right? That, that's, that was their initial goal. So they built an auto ML tool. They really beefed up the, the deployment. I think you saw them a couple of weeks ago in our session on um, their auto, their um, ML ops platform and, and deployment and monitoring that. They also acquired a data prep tool. So now with all the modules, it becomes an end-to-end -end platform. And then um, IBM had their GUI coding optional modeler tool that they put in the cloud and paired it with notebooks and then also paired in um, um, auto AI, which is another tool that we demoed um, several weeks ago. And so all three of these do offer those end-to-end -end platforms uh, with that capability, but they're, they're pretty different. I will say that Data Robot is by far the easiest out of the box, um, very little training you could get up and running with it. As long as you know some things about machine learning, you might not build a good model, but you could do it very, very quickly. SageMaker Studio, on the other hand, I will say is, is not that kind of tool. And so when people started saying, well, it, it kind of is a competitor to Data Robot, I think it's important to keep in mind, you, you still need to know cloud computing. You need to know AWS. You need to know how billing works and you need to know how to open an S3 bucket and access it, um, some familiarity with notebooks and maybe Python to really make the best use of it. And so here's where I think someone who has all that um, certainly could use Data Robot or, or Watson Studio, but it doesn't quite go the other way, right? If someone doesn't know these things, they could they could figure out Data Robot pretty easily. Um, so that's just thinking about that. It, it's not an out of the box solution. In fact, um, many experienced data scientists have actually struggled with SageMaker Studio. It takes some getting used to. There, there's some things that need to be adjusted in there. There's been some reviews about like, you know, it, it only works through single sign-on, not just a regular account, things like that. So it can be a little bit tricky for someone who's just not familiar with cloud computing or AWS. So I think that's important to know. Um, all three of these have auto ML capabilities in them. Um, but SageMaker Studio and Data Robot uh, have great deployment tools and the monitoring and alerts, right? You can deploy easily and set up those alerts so you can monitor long term. Um, at least with the auto ML tool, the, the autopilot in SageMaker Studio, it has to be a data coming from an S3 bucket. So it's got to be a flat file where you could start from um, a number of other sources with the other two. But this here, this is a huge win for SageMaker Studio. Um, when you use autopilot and you run uh, an experiment, right, and you let it test out all the algorithms and do some pre-processing steps and all of that, what it does is it creates notebooks for you and it gives you all that raw code. Now, Data Robot is, is very transparent, as transparent as it can be, and you can export models, but it's there's some caveats. It's like a, um, it might not be the exact model. The pre-processing steps, I'm not sure you can get that out, but it's really nice to 
to have that in um, SageMaker's autopilot to just get the notebooks, right? And it's great because if you want to tweak and adjust things, you can do that. If you want to learn um, how to code better, you can use that as an example and then like deconstruct it and rebuild it. Um, so, it, so it is great to be able to a have that transparency, have that raw code there, and it's all annotated. Um, so I'll show you that. And then the the other big win for SageMaker Studio is the page you go pricing. So um, you know, doing this demo, I should check, but I, I might have spent five dollars or something, right? So you're you're not signing up for a multi-year agreement or having capital expenses. So that's AWS's pricing model, which is very appealing too. So that's kind of um, a rough comparison across three of those machine learning end-to-end -end platforms. So right now I'm just going to jump in and show you a few things within the, the tool itself. So this is SageMaker Studio and um, it integrates with Git over here. You could just go in here and get your, um, your repos. Um, a few of the things right up here. The first thing you can do is just go in here and quickly spin up a notebook, um, choose a kernel, Right, and you're ready to go and you're ready to start coding. Um, just kind of close that one. I have one here already open. This is um, an example that you could download from the Amazon uh, marketplace. So it's actually a really nice example. It's very well annotated and descriptive. So if you're trying to learn this for yourself, you could uh, get this notebook, um, get the data and walk through it yourself. But it's essentially if you wanted to just use a notebook and come in and do it end to end there, you could. And, and so it's you know doing all the setup, it's gathering the data. This example is a customer churn. And so you can see the data here. This column churn has zeros and ones, so that's our target we're trying to predict. Uh, you can see it's already aggregated to the right level, one row per customer. Did they churn? Did they not? And then all of the features for that customer. So in reality, you'd probably have many, many notebooks because you're doing a ton of the work to create these features, to bring it all together, right? But here we're, we're starting with a training sample. Um, and then down here, uh, I think this is important because what we're doing here is creating this experiment, right? And so with that, that experiment, it's sort of tagging any trial that we do back to this. And then down here, we're, we're running those, those models and, and training them. But if you, you come to the sidebar and you click on experiments, I can see all the experiments that I've run. This is the customer churn prediction one, which is what we just created there. And if I click on it, I see seven trials here um, that were run. If I highlight those, I can take a deeper look at them. So they're all here um, and I can get a lot of different information. Maybe I don't want those, but I want their metrics. So I wanna see um, how accurate they were and um, maybe rank them to see which ones were, were the most accurate. So this one has the, the lowest error rate in the validation sample, right? And so I can take a look at that. I can also um, click on some of these and maybe I wanna get a visualization. So one thing I can do is come in here and say, well, how, how does model accuracy, maybe by the last validation error, differ by um, one of the parameters that I tuned. Let's look at minimum child weight. And so you can get a visualization here and say, well, this one had the, the least amount of error for, um, for the changes in parameter, right? So, so I might have changed a lot of other things, but holding those constant, looking at just the, the change in minimum child weight of that algorithm, uh, I can get a look at, at which ones performed best and go with that. So this is again when I um, come in and manually do this and I you know, build everything in a notebook and, and I code it. So the other option, like we said, is to use the autopilot. So instead, let's assume that I have that training sample. It's sitting in an S3 bucket somewhere. I've already created it either in a notebook right here or maybe in an external tool somewhere. Um, I create an experiment. I just have to give it a name. I find the S3 bucket where it's sitting. I tell it what the um, what the target is, so I just type in churn. I give it an S3 bucket to export out to, and then down here I can say, you know, what type of machine learning problem is it? I can say auto, you figure it out, or this is binary classifier, um, or regression, and then I just hit create experiment. So again, I have one of those done. This one took probably four hours to run. Um, so it's this one here. If I double click on that, you can see how many trials it ran. 
it ran different algorithms, it ran a lot of different um, variations of tuning parameters. And let's just say I, I want to look at some of those. I can do the same thing. Um, so I can look at those, I can um, look at the different metrics. So I have um, more options here for metrics. And let's see. I could sort those um, and get a look at you know performance. I can click on any one of these, maybe this is the best one, and just deploy it. Right? I'm going to deploy it. It'll create an endpoint that'll go here, and, and I can take it from there. I will say that um, we will have a, one of our follow-up sessions in, in the next block of sessions will be more about deployment. So I'd like to focus on the, the deployment piece and that direct integration into QuickSight. So this is all sort of the back end of data science, right? But someone, an end user, is going to need to make decisions about, hey, this client looks like they're, they have a high probability of churning, what am I going to do? And so you can um, take this model and export it into a, a dashboard in QuickSight that might be viewed by some kind of business manager who is trying to make decisions based on that. And so um, we'll take this another step in another demo to kind of look at that integration as well. So these are um, a lot of the, the different options. Like I said, over here, you can integrate it right into your, your GitHub. So you can pull information. You can um, remote into a Git for AWS right, to get this exact example here. And one other thing I wanted to show you about this um, example is it goes through all the training yeah, for a long time. Um, but it will also talk about, this is tuning some other parameters, um, the debugger, so it'll walk you through that, and then through the deployment where you can, um, sorry, there's a lot of stuff in here, right? The deployment of the model and then uh, monitoring it as well. So it's really fun to play around with. Um, I will say there's, there's things that you have to figure out here, right? So this if you've seen Data Robot, it's very out of the box. Like I said, just jump in and start modeling. Um, if you've used Swapna Studio or Modeler, it's drag and drop GUI, so you can kind of figure that out. This, the, the autopilot, very easy to run. Um, the, uh, the notebooks, obviously, you need to know how to, how to do that, but there's also just the, the integration. Sometimes there's, um, you know, you, for example, the single sign-on, you can't just come in with a regular account, you need your single sign-on. Um, and I remembered one other thing that I wanted to show you about um, these jobs is, where is it? Apologies. Um, oh, here. So open candidate notebook. So this is a notebook that was created automatically. Um, so as I said, that it's full transparency. So as it's running all of those different trials, it's creating the notebooks here. And so this is not something that I would have written. This is something that was generated automatically by autopilot. So I can get this and I can say, okay, why was this better? You know, what did they do exactly? What were the parameters? Um, dig into it a little bit, change it, use it myself. Uh, etc. And then the other one is explore, exploration notebook. So this is nice. Again, this is auto-generated by the autopilot. It'll spit this out. It'll show you a visualization uh, sample of the data. Um, and then it'll go down to show you things like missing values, number of unique categories for any of these categorical fields. It'll give you descriptive statistics for the um, numeric fields. So you can come in here and look at the median max. These are things that are done um, anyway by data scientists, right, as you're going through figuring out how to treat and adjust these, you're going to want to create these and, and really understand the inside and out. So it's nice to throw it into autopilot to get that, that um, information just spit out automatically so you don't have to code that. So I'm just going to jump back here for some key takeaways and then we'll pause and take some questions. Um, so like I said, SageMaker Studio, it was released six months ago. It's still in early development. Things are changing constantly with it. There's a lot of flexibility and end to end functionality in it. Uh, in my experience, the, the more, the easier something is, the less flexible it might be. So you're losing some of the control, transparency, flexibility. And so this is kind of the other way. It's very flexible. 
um, but it's not necessarily always so easy to use because again, it's it's within AWS, so you need to understand AWS and have that basic um, cloud computing understanding. It offers notebooks, autopilot, debugger, experiments, model training, um, all very great tools. Some of those pretty novel for the market. Uh, it, like I said, it comes with a steep learning curve. Um, it's not out of the box, super easy to use. But the pay-as-you-go AWS pricing is very appealing um, for organizations that especially just want to try it out and not commit to something that's, that's multi-year. So I'm going to pause right there and see um, what questions I can answer for anyone. I'm not sure. You may have answered this one. Um, can I open notebooks um, that I created in SageMaker or other places and use them in Studio? Um, so yes. Yes and no. So yes, you can open them. They're safe for notebooks. If you've, um, if it's written in Python, you can bring it in. But some of the connections might be a little bit different. So like I have been doing things in SageMaker that connected to um, my Snowflake uh, data warehouse, and those all need to be adjusted. Some of the connections, you know, some of the functions that we had created for that are, aren't working or work a little bit differently. So, so those are some of the kinks that I think a lot of the reviews from data scientists are talking about. It's, it's not exactly the same thing. Some of the back end is a little different. So there might be some tweaking that needs to be done, but for the most part, yes, it, it's Python. It's a Jupyter notebook essentially. So, so you should be able to do that. You just might need to import some things and change the configuration a little bit. Thank you. Thank you for that further clarification. I'm sure that helped. Um, the next question is one that I would have myself, like auto ML or autopilot seems so great. Is there ever a reason you wouldn't use it? Um, if you have it at your, your disposal, I would definitely use it. Um, the only time you, you kind of can't use it is if it's not appropriate for the use case. So one thing I think I'd mentioned was time series. I, I don't see that capability in, um, in SageMaker Studio. Data Robot has it. I think it was, you know, not in their first release. It came later. So there are some types of problems that just wouldn't be appropriate for it. <coughs> um, I'm not sure how SageMaker Studio right now handles deep learning problems. Um, so that might be something to keep in mind. If you have it, use it. I love them, especially for pilots, because I may not be doing all of the data mining. I just want to get an idea of is there signal there? You know, what's the quickest and easiest way to do that? But at the same time, for a full project um, in deployment, yeah, I'm going to do all my data prep. I'm going to do all the feature extraction, and then I'm still going to run it through it. So there's no reason not to, even if you, you know, even if you wanted to manually build it, find out what the best one is. But especially since you get the code directly as an output, that there's just no reason not to to use it. Um, you know, other ML auto ML tools might not have that transparency. And if you have to have that transparency in the model and have the exact equation, that again might be something to consider. But with SageMaker Studio, from what I can see, it's full transparency. They just give you all the code. Thank you. And um, we don't have any question, other questions at this time, um, but remind everybody that they're welcome to talk one-on-one -on -one with you. Go to your website at the, our website and schedule it at ironsidegroup.com. And great. All right. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for joining. Um, yeah, hope hope you can sign up for the next sessions.